something to not sleep on in 2024 is Prop 65. Find your category that you're selling in and just read the freaking page. <laughs> What's up, Million Dollar Seller listeners? This is Nick Chouquette with my co-host, Ro Rosas, coming what at up, you today. What up, what up? We got a great topic for you guys. We're going to talk about seven things to avoid in 2024 as Amazon sellers, and we're also going to talk about three loopholes that have closed or are closing anytime soon. Ro, uh-huh. thanks for helping me pick out this topic, man. Uh, you know, Let the audience know how you're doing today, man, and, and let's kick this thing off. Man, I'm I'm doing great. Uh, you know, the hot we're taping this around the holidays, so I can't wait. Uh, I love taking some downtime, resting. You know, anytime you get a little break when it comes to having your fingers around all the operations around Amazon is a great day for me because you know you can rest a little bit, your mind can just float around, do the things you like. If it's with family or avoiding family for yeah. some people, yeah. You know? Especially around the holidays, you want to avoid maybe the in-laws. Uh, you know, some people, I was just talking to somebody today that's like, I got to go to my sister-in-law's. I dread that. So yeah. I was, I was feeling, I was like, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I know I a lot of people. pretty good, man. I get to go to the in-laws and they help out so much with the, the kids. And <laughs> I don't have to worry about cooking or cleaning. And hopefully I'm just chilling, eating turkey watching Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales go through the roof, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all want. That's absolutely yep. what we all want. All right, man. Well, I think we got some good stuff for the listeners today. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and let you I'm kick game. off uh, Wherever number you one, start. man. Yeah, let's do it. Let, let them know. What are, what are we avoiding in 2024 as Amazon sellers? Uh, and then we'll roll into some loopholes that uh, you know we think are, are done or going to be done soon. Yeah, got you. So let's do with the, the start with the top seven. Um, I'll go first. So or we would just bounce off back and forth on this. Yeah. I would say the number one thing is to understand your account health status and what that means to your account. So not paying attention to your account health can have some big consequences if you're not on top of it. Right. Um, so. I'll tell you from, from for us, the recent story around that is that we learned a lot about account health and that that's an actual team that is separate from the enforcement, what this guy was telling me, the enforcement police at Amazon and separate from general support. So the first line of defense, when you think about, you know, my listing's gone bad or, or, uh, uh, or my images aren't updating. I'm trying to do all this catalog stuff. That's not them. They are the people that if you get a performance notification, that's the folks to talk. Something has gone completely wrong in your account or somebody's coming after you with a, a complaint. These are the folks that, that have that button. Call me. Goes to them and they internally communicate with all the different um, stakeholders. So if it's enforcement police, if it's legal, they're going to be the folks that are there. And they just started working two years ago as a team. So they're fairly new in the Amazon world Yeah, when it comes to this. Yeah, I think they ro- I remember they rolled it out like in beta to some bigger sellers. Um, and then now I think like everyone, just about everyone has access to account health. So I think the big takeaway from there is like, you got to pay attention to that stuff. Like don't oh, yeah. no doubt. ignore these programs that Amazon's rolling out. They're rolling them out for a reason. And if you avoid them, you're not going to be able to leverage them. Right. So pay attention to that account health dashboard. Uh, and hopefully you've got someone on your side. And the important thing there, Nick, that I was I was told is that you want to pay attention to the score. And some people have like a thousand. I don't know. A lot of people do, but it's based on volume that mm-hmm. takes into account part of the score. So if you're selling one item a day and let's say you have 10 violations, it's going to appear differently than if you sell a hundred items or a thousand items a day and you have those same 10 violations. Your score is going to be lower. I'm sorry. Yeah. Your score is going to be lower the less you sell, Mm -hmm. even though somebody may have the same number of violations. So the higher volume, the smaller the impact. I was reading how some seller had like hundreds of suspected IP violations 
but his score was still good because he had a high number of orders on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, man, it reminds me, I don't know why it makes me think of this, but you know, I started out as an FBM seller on Amazon and your ODR metric, your order defect rate, something we always paid attention to. Um, and your FBA orders used to impact your ODR in a positive mm. way as an FBM seller. And it was just such an easy way to like get your metrics looking better. Yep. Um, because those FBA orders went out and they got delivered on time. You got credit for that as an FBM seller. Uh, and that was kind of like, it was kind of like a loophole, right? Like the yeah. more FBA orders I get, the better my FBM metrics look. Uh, and Amazon, of course, closed that. Um, you know, Amazon catches up to this stuff quickly, man. Like they're they're not stupid, they're not dumb. They're Amazon. They've got more data that's, than anybody. You ain't fooling them. <laughs> and then that's why you can't give away the secrets, man. It, that's what I, I mean. I, I've been told, and I know this from being around for a while now, that they uh, Amazon does pay attention. I don't know if they do moderation, like from humans. Or if they just have automated bots that scour and scrape websites. But I know that they do have folks that are paying attention to social media. They are paying attention to what podcasts, what are said on podcasts. They are paying attention to groups, uh, particularly Facebook groups. Uh, they're paying attention to what's being said. Because if it's something that's costing them money, they want to close yeah. that loophole. I know we're going to talk about closing loopholes in, a little, in yeah. a little bit yeah man i think um number two man is is my favorite on the list which <laughs> i'm gonna go with bots gone crazy right like uh, yes yes be on the lookout because you know that technology is just getting uh leveraged more and more and more in business and if you don't understand how these bots can take down your listing and how giving them the right input gets your listing back up, you will be stuck in this endless loophole with, or, or uh, this endless loop with seller support, yeah. account reps at Amazon. None oh. of them can override it because it's a bot in the system. Uh, and, so you and really got to all of them understand, stuff. which is my gripe. You know, speaking of bots going crazy, that there are things that you get flagged on, but you call support. Uh, they don't really quite know why. I know yeah. that uh, it, it, there is a guy, uh, you know, my Amazon guy, Stephen Pope. He, he put something out on LinkedIn this morning about it. He had uh, almost 500 listings that became inactive and was flagged. And he called support in, in this post. He's, he said that support had no idea, no idea why these listings were down although they were down and um, eventually a couple of days later, he got them back up. But that's so frustrating yeah. that bots are going crazy. It's happened to us. We uh, sell private label items and we also resell. And so from time to time, there are trademark items that we are authorized to use. They appear on the listing. We've, we, we have them the way as the fair use, you know, compliant with or sold for or made by. And it still triggers a violation, uh, whether it's the bots sometimes, generally mostly it's the bots, or the brand themselves. Somehow they're disconnected and they have a third party that's managing it and they file a complaint. And it's problematic sometimes to get somebody at a large company to realize, oh, yeah, we are authorized. We're the good guys. We're not the bad guys. And uh, and, and Amazon can't can't fix that a lot of times, even though you give them what they need. It's just yeah. frustrating. And you know what, Ro, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and roll this one in into number three because um, I think it fits perfectly okay. because you know Amazon sellers like you have to take full control and responsibility over what's going on in your business, right? And yep. and I've seen a lot of people across different categories get shut down and taken down because they don't understand the terms of service within their specific category, oh. right? Like if you're selling a product that, um, well, I'll just give the specific example. So we were selling uh, tooth gym kits, 
right? Okay. And one of our unique selling propositions was, hey, we've got glue that comes from a dental office, right? So we've got high quality glue. So we had dental glue in our listing. And oh. I neglected to look at the category terms of service and uh, we got taken down. No one knew why. I didn't know why. Brent, you know, the seller support didn't know why. Nobody we talked to knew why. But then I looked and I read the cert, the terms specific to that category. And it was like, if you think, if you're selling anything that's like dental, then it has to be registered with the FDA. You got to have a Ooh. certificate, yada, yada, oh, yeah. yada. We got mm -hmm. that approval, got the documents they wanted and then we submitted it and then we could only sell to like dentists right so now because <laughs> they the yeah customers yeah couldn't even buy our product but then i was like all right i'm just gonna take the word out now and i took the word out i just opened a case and said hey we're not selling this like we changed the glue right yeah and uh boom it was fixed right so like all of that hassle can be avoided if you simply go into seller central search in the t in the search box right type in there find your category that you're selling in and just read the freaking page <laughs> and, and all that stuff can be avoided and you know what makes it easier today uh we've been using this a lot for those type of things are um the chat gpt or any of the chatbots that are out there take the terms of service bring it in paste it into uh chat gpt or if you use the spreadsheet there's a plugin that'll yep. work just as well for that and you put in i sell whatever it is the term or even if this works for reviews as well this review came in bloom here's the terms of service is this violating that terms of service and it mm -hmm. will spit back it's violating because a b c d e f and g or no there is nothing here that appears like it violates and we've used that to successfully re, uh, appeal as well as um, try to contact support and say, hey, you know, you got to remove this or, hey, we're doing the right things. We, this is what we're doing. And yeah. we've successfully been able to, to make our case when you can refer back to the terms of service, whether you're trying to appeal something or trying to win something in your favor. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great use case for that, man. Um, yeah. Definitely going to give that a shot. The, the, the chat bots are getting better. And I'm, I'm yeah. for me, I've been using ChatGPT for a while, but yeah. I have been really falling in love with Claude from Anthropic, which is okay. seems a little easier. There's an easier back and forth. ChatGPT is really heavy on the engineering prompt. Yeah. Right. Uh, but Claude seems more like a natural conversation when you're going back and forth and interesting um, can you get that on your phone Vlad? oh yeah oh yeah app? yeah there's an app yeah. there's an app okay so chad gpt also now has an app for for mobile for both android and iphone uh, i for for doing research chad gpt is just better it can go out on the internet you can upload yeah. documents you can give it a link it'll scrape a video and pull the transcript so feature wise chad gpt is still the gorilla right now okay um, but if you don't need the gorilla and you want maybe the horse, Claude is good. Okay. All right. Nice. Nice. All right, man. Well, I think we're on, uh, we're on we're, number four. You want to hit him with number four? Yeah. Oh yeah. This one, this is a new one. Buy, you've heard this before. Nick, go ahead and buy your competitor's inventory to just get them out of the way. Cause they're on the listing and they're costing you money and it's cheaper to just go buy the inventory versus you know, trying to deal with support and, you know, all the other nonsense that takes time, test buys, nothing happens in a day, right? So just go buy the inventory. Hold on there. You may want to think fast about that one. That was the conventional old advice. Don't do that. You're going to get in trouble. They are monitoring this. I know this from firsthand experience. You may get away with one, two, small purchase, three, from the fourth one, you're go, you, you go to buy inventory from a competitor that's on your listing. It's going to get flagged and there is in, in, it'll, in the performance notification, it'll spit that back out, that buying competitive inventory. So the bots can go crazy on buying inventory. Yeah. And having an account that you're buying it that's not connected 
can avoid that, but not indefinitely, because they, again, said Nick, Amazon's really good at putting pieces together. One, yeah. two, three, four times you get away with it. Fifth, sixth, seventh, you're not, because they're going to catch yeah. on. They're going to see, oh, that's address and that address and this one you've you've shipped here before and that bleep 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 bleep. Boom, they connect all the pieces and now you're in trouble. Yeah, man, you really got to be careful um, with navigating that like intellectual property, copyright, trademark law, because Amazon's taking that way more seriously. And that's where like the buy the inventory out came came from, right? Like if you have a competitor hijack your listing, you know, you can buy out the inventory, maybe you start filing claims or something like that. But if you start to manipulate that system, Amazon's going to punish you because they can get in trouble by bigger authorities um, if if they allow that stuff to happen and people feel like, you know, copyright or trademark law is being abused mm -hmm. through Amazon. Um, you know, they're going to lay down the hammer fast because, yeah. uh, you know, they don't care about you as one little seller at the end of the day. They uh, don't. Yeah, they don't. Um, and that's, that's why we pass line. that stuff off to a, a professional, man. We use Thorncrest for a lot of our um, companies, a lot of like brands that we wholesale yeah. for and, and take like have a serious relationship with because hmm. they have a they have a monitoring piece and then they have a uh, enforcement piece and they're real lawyers. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. So we like to just let them make the recommendations on what we can do and can't do. Um, and let them send the letters. I used to do that stuff myself and get like a co-branded letter from mm -hmm. the, uh, the other brand and stuff like that. But I'm not a lawyer. Like I was just sending one letter and hoping <laughs> these guys go away. Right. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah if you no, really want to take that serious. I think using, using a professional makes sense. Okay. For sure. And I think that's, that's great advice. Cause you know, uh, we tend to as Amazon sellers be like, I could do it all, right? Right. Yes. Mm, probably not that. Man, I've been trying to kill that that piece of me. <laughs> <laughs> you so know I what? We all we're, we all think, you know we're a jack of all trades. I mean, because yeah. you know a lot of folks start you know by themselves or with just one other person, and then they just grow from there. And that mindset never leaves. Yeah, it's tough to get rid of, man. Oh. Um, it's not easy. All right, so don't watch yourself with buying inventory. Let me see if this will work. Right on, yes. Be careful. That's right. Let's yeah. go to numero Let's cinco. Go. Performance notifications. Something yeah, I just- Don't ignore this. Don't <laughs> ignore this. And this is something I learned from a conversation with somebody inside of Account Health. Uh, he said that as long as your score, uh, I want to say it was 200 or 250, Oh my, I'm trying to recall right now what that number was, but there is a um, moving target when it comes to account health. I mean, let me just, I've got my other screen up. I'm going to tell you right now, 250. So as long as you stay above 250, uh, you're going to be in the safe zone. But when you fall below 250, then you put yourself in jeopardy when it comes to performance notifications. So what happens is when you get a performance notification, this specialist over at Account Help told me that, and by the way, US-based Account Help wasn't anybody in India or Philippines or any of that stuff. It was a US person told me that. You stay uh, above 250, but what you've got to do is respond to a performance notification within 72 hours especially if it's something serious you know a competitor says hey you're you're counterfeiting let's go that's really high up on the list uh in terms of egregious things on the amazon side if you don't respond within 72 hours then you put yourself in a position to get yourself suspended mm -hmm. uh, so paying attention to performance notifications is important so important um Nick, that internally now for us, what we do is we've created an automation around it uh, so that uh, the, I have a, somebody internally that handles compliance for us. She gets the notifications put into ClickUp automatically with a bunch of pre-filled fields already pre-populated. And all she's got to do is respond based on what was pre-populated 
as soon as those performance notifications come in, they click up. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Great so, use case for ClickUp. Yeah. Because, you know, Seller Central's, I'll just say that. I don't care if Amazon is listening. Seller Central sucks when it comes to case management and performance notification management inside yeah. of Seller Central. It's just horrendous. Yeah. Say it Hol louder. <laughs> <laughs> horrendous. Horrendous. You yeah. know, they have AWS on the back end to do amazing search. Apply that to performance notifications. Apply that to uh, case management on Seller Central. So, but nothing to sleep on. But you can fix that by sending performance notifications as well as the cases. You can send those to ClickUp, mm -hmm. and ClickUp is a beautiful way to keep track of all of that nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm a big fan of ClickUp as well, and have a similar system set up in in that. We do it for shipments as well. Um, Great, great tool. Ah, no, terrific, terrific. You want to roll into numero seis? Yeah, let's do it, man. So, uh, yeah. Price fixing. Price, price fixing, right? This is a new like, one. Don't do it. Don't <laughs> do it. <laughs> you know, it turns out that uh, Amazon is onto this. You know, what's, what's ironic here, Nick, is that if we were in the same category and we're beating each other up, left and right because amazon really does pit one seller against another hey rolando's selling it for a dollar cheaper on the listing you're not in the buy box anymore go back and do something about it right the yeah. do something is to go below right you want to get in the buy box so yeah. what happened to a few sellers recently was that they decided hey well, let's not beat each other up let's make money sounds good Problem is, on the other side of the equation, the law and the authorities call that price fix. <laughs> so um, I'm going to have to give this one uh -oh. a uh -oh. big fat uh-oh, because it's one thing to be in Amazon trouble. It's a whole nother to be in trouble with the FTC yes. when it comes yeah. to price fixing, because uh, all kinds of really bad things can happen at that point. And I noticed this happening more when, remember when it was maybe a year or two ago, Amazon rolled out. Uh, you've got to have your business address like yes. uh, up to date and they put it on the the accounts right you can yep. see everyone's official registered address and uh as soon as that happened man i would start getting emails i got text messages from other sellers on our listings really asking me to change my price man what it's crazy i'm pretty sure they were like international like overseas so they probably honestly don't care no um but yeah crazy wow that's crazy. interesting i haven't had that happen to us yet but yeah i do have other sellers contacting us for different reasons but that's a a first yeah it's crazy and no it's it's a you know if i were to just you know air out some grievance just kind of the whole buy box thing is really a mess because as a seller I've had for us happen where we put a listing on Amazon. We have, you know, we sell on Walmart, we sell our own website and Amazon really encourages you to lower or maintain your price lower than other websites. Otherwise the buy box won't show, but you know yeah. what, Nick, we sell products on Amazon at a higher price point compared to our competitors that are on Amazon and we still do well. And you would think otherwise. So what Amazon's argument has always been, we want to protect consumers because we want the lowest price. That's great. But you know what consumers also want? Convenience. Yeah. And some of them say, price be damned. I need this tomorrow because it's at FBA and it's in my own city and they'll deliver it today even, right? So I will pay the extra dollar or two or whatever it is that because I want to be profitable at the end of the day, I want to make money. So I have a higher price than other where at everywhere else. No, that's just the way I roll, but I shouldn't be punished and the buy box suppressed because my price is higher than anywhere else or higher than my competitor. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's a tough one. You know, it's, it's, it definitely sucks. I hate seeing the buy box get suppressed because of, uh, you know, it's on Walmart for a lower price. But honestly, you know what I think the best thing to do is? I talked to a couple guys at Amazon Innovate. Uh, okay. A guy from Simple Modern, um, Alan Stevens from Cost, and they just have different product strategies per channel. 
So Good. they don't roll out the same product with the same UPC code and the same oh, size on Walmart and Amazon. They're doing a different size, same product, different size, different UPC code, avoid the problem wow. altogether. I'm always a fan of just seeing where like, how can I just eliminate this as an issue for me? Um, and I really liked the, the strategies that, that they gave there. Well, Obviously, if you're a reseller, a little different, you don't have control over what other you know brands and sellers are doing on other platforms it makes it makes it more you got to jump through more hoops so you'd have to almost do something different for amazon in that if you're bundling something for example if you're reselling maybe you bundle something that's got one thing for amazon and you bundle it a different way for walmart so that different price um or not bundling at all on walmart right i don't know about you but Walmart's still not getting there in terms of what we're seeing from a from a channel perspective. I just kind of know it's a tangent, but I'm not seeing the the growth on Amazon and the volume like I'm seeing on um, on TikTok. <laughs> oh, slipped in there like on TikTok because we're yep. we're experimenting there too on yeah, on TikTok's, Amazon. TikTok's coming for Amazon. Man. <laughs> they, <laughs> they are <laughs> with all that money they have. That they've by the way they've surprised people. They have a lot of money. Their 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 yeah. ad sales are going through the roof, so they've got a big big treasure chest full of money, and they're gonna deploy it to to try to upset the Apple part. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so what we got next? We here? got number, uh, number number seven. seven. Lucky number seven. Yeah, so we're talking about not being obsessed with profit, right? Yeah, gotta, that's a you mistake. Be focused on this. You have to be obsessed with profit. This is the only way you're gonna win in 2024. I'm hearing it more and more. Uh, good friend Chad Rubin, he he uh, got a company that focuses on you know being profitable with by the by SKU level and stuff. But you know you got to really I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call myself a financial expert or by any stretch of the imagination. But I got to tell you, I've had a lot more conversations with like our CPA. I've had a lot more conversation with folks in our ops team and looking at literally at every SKU. Is it profitable? Is it plus or minus? And then if it's too small in the margin, can we actually make a difference to bring that margin up, either price or volume? Of and if we right. can't, then we just got to get rid of it and then yeah. focus on the stuff that's really uh, where we're crushing it. I mean, that's that's what you, your options are left right now on on Amazon because it is you're getting squeezed everywhere. That's just the, yeah. that's just the bottom line. Yeah, and when you're you know when you're at a certain level, like a one or two or three percent difference in operational costs or landing oh, yeah. costs of goods or or whatever it is, is, is a big deal. And um, I think there's a lot of sellers out there who um, you know they're yeah. doing big yeah. revenue numbers and you know they're able to get away with not being profitable for a certain amount of time. But it's going to catch up with you which, unless you, you catch a lucky break, which can certainly happen. But like, do you really want to be playing that game and rolling, rolling the dice in that way? Like, no, just just use. There's so many tools that make it easy too. like you can get a profit and loss statement at the SKU level. Yeah, like pretty, pretty easily. Yes. Um, and uh, one other tip, too, uh, for cutting down costs is a lot of tools like what? SoStock, Data Dive are doing uh they'll tell you if you change the dimensions of your product to this you'll save this much oh really um yeah so you, you know if you cut down 30 cents 50 cents a dollar that's huge if you're oh, doing yeah. thousands yeah, yeah. of units yeah, yeah 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 i'll tell you what we've started doing we um we started to shrink wrap so we do bundles we do a lot of bundles and to that extent shrink wrapping versus you have a package and just like this extra half inch, mm -hmm. that could be, let's say that shrink wrap to that, that's going to save you money. As, and especially on products where you're selling a lot of volume, right? Yeah. Uh, so shrink wrapping, making it tight so that you don't have any extra loose makes a huge difference. So if we're talking about saving a couple extra points, if you if this is more relevant, to, and it really depends for those sellers, you know, whether you've got high volume and you're bundling or you've got stuff in packed, any extra packaging hanging out, if you have a way to to wrap that or shrink wrap that, 
uh, during the fulfillment process, do it. You're going to find yeah. yourself saving a lot of money and gaining a couple points in extra margin on the FBA fees that you you find a reduction. Nice. So yeah, you guys. Uh, so yeah, um, got some tips for profitability. How you guys can increase uh, that, reduce those operating costs, um, and just be focused on it. Just you know, be looking at that daily. If you have a large catalog, uh, you know, trim the fat, right? Make sure you're getting rid of uh, products that aren't contributing to your bottom line uh, and save your cash for the ones that are really moving the needle for your business. No, no doubt. No doubt. And Nick, you want to roll into the three uh, Let's loop do it, man. holes slash sketchy? Yeah, we're going to do these ones quick and dirty for you guys. First up, we got the Ajax link. So the right. Ajax link um, has been around for a while. Uh, you could see kind of some internal annotations on your product potentially your account as well and from what i hear ro you're saying that loophole is closed i haven't tried it in a while yep no way that is Done. that's not happening anymore they shut it down too many people got a good thing for a while and started talking too much yeah too much these none of these people i shouldn't say none but a lot of amazon sellers would not cut it in the fbi or CIA. they loose lips <laughs> all over the place so if you didn't yeah. know what this was, this was a way for you to check what flags are internally in Amazon's system by ASIN so that you can then go fix it, right? Oh, there's a term that they don't like. No problem. There's a, a code for that. And you could be like, okay, well, I'm going to go get rid of that term. All of that's been taken out of the picture. What be nice would be nice is if Amazon had a way for you to self-inspect a listing, right? Uh, or have a way for you to go through and identify those things on existing listings or that you've had for a while and be like, hmm, which of these things are, are not kosher or are not helping me um, sell more. Now, they have something like this with the improved quality thing, yeah. but it doesn't really address some of those other things that are, quote, flagged yeah. on the inside of Amazon that are on your listing. And I think all sellers would benefit if they could clean up their listings and things that are flagged internally so that Amazon doesn't view you as a bad listing or that the hammer's got to come down on you. Yeah. So if any listeners out there got another solution for the Ajax link, you can send it <laughs> yeah. to me. Don't talk about it. <laughs> Be quiet. Then, you know, go into a group chat or something and let us know because... Uh, that's not available anymore. Hit me on Telegram. And in, 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 <laughs> encryption, we're good. Uh, all right. Number two uh, loophole that I think is going away is yeah. strike through pricing. Ooh. Right. You hear people talk about this a lot. They want to get this red badge, the sale badge, uh, lowest price in 30 days badge, strike through pricing. There are a lot of lawsuits out there going on where customers yep. and consumers are are pissed off about this stuff right they feel right. manipulated so the noise is coming from to. the customer side yeah yes and you know we've seen like Kohl's has been involved in it bed bath and beyond's been Ooh. involved in it HP Big has been involved in it um and i think amazon's starting to take note i'm seeing ways of getting strike through pricing going away and i only expect that to get um you know, more it's, controlled by Amazon as they close those loopholes. It's a mess. This is the bottom line. It's a mess. And um, anytime you're talking about pricing, it is a mess uh, because what's MSRP? What does that really mean? Right. Are you getting a deal if if what I'm doing is really just, it's something that's called free, but I'm raising the price a buck to cover the cost of shipping. It is yeah. just a mess. I see them just doing away with those fields in the back end. And it's like, here's your sale price, right? Here's yeah. your here's your list price. And if you want to run a sale, you know, here you go. And I think that's going to be be it. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, they so, don't want to they don't want to be stuck with the um, with the liability. Right. I, I, can, I, I thought of something, but we'll go to the top three. I okay. just thought of something that. OK. And number three is the uh, the search find buy and the buying groups. Like, what the hell's honestly, going on with that, man? Like a lot of people should know, yeah, that uh, you know those are super risky and sketchy. Amazon is is taking that very seriously 
um, for things like review manipulation or rank manipulation. If you're doing things to try and get ranked for a certain keyword, um, you know, Amazon has shut down a lot of. And loopholes why would people have done that. it in the first place, Nick? For those that have no idea what search find buy or why would I even invest a money and say, okay, do this for me, X Y Z company, do this for me. Yeah, What's... when you if you're identifying search terms that you believe are driving sales to competitors, if for a product you want to launch, um, then you know some people had the idea. Well, what if I can just kind of manufacture sales for these search terms? <laughs> um, and and you know, ultimately on the back end, you're you're increasing conversion rate for certain search terms. So Amazon thinks you've got a product that a customer that searches this wants okay. to buy. So you move up in in the ranks. And um, you know, that was one of those things that just took off fast, man. And uh, you know, a lot of people talked about it. A lot of people made money off offering is it, that is type it, of stuff. Were you is it really like gaming the system, right? So the, the when you when you talk about search find buy, that's really you're saying it you game the system in your favor because yeah. somebody put in, you know, if you sell red t shirts red t-shirts and they went and bought yours amazon essentially favors your listing more than the others because everybody's using red t-shirt to go to your listing and then buy yep yep hmm. well, so what happened that do you know of people that made out like you know like it was 1999 on these search search, search find buys where people going oh yeah i mean it was it definitely made a huge difference like it would immediately work Wow. It would immediately get your your ranking increased, um, you know, which which leads to um, um, big money, and it also allowed people to plan their launches very effectively, um, you know, because Amazon gives you the data. Like if you go in the back end, you can see a list of competitors, and you can put the pieces together and see, okay, you know, the market what? I'm competing in it has this click through rate, this add to cart rate, this conversion rate. And, and you can manufacture yeah. that, right? Um, and great idea. I love ideas like that, but um, <laughs> you know they can they can get you in trouble. Um, didn't they didn't they go after a bunch of face group groups that were? I don't know if they were all part of this type of thing activity. Well, I know they went like I heard the number thirteen thousand some time ago that they went after thirteen thousand Facebook groups that were either collectively you know putting some muscle behind this or had their own private groups that uh, were doing this kind of activity yeah yeah i heard a lot of things got shut down facebook groups websites you know um they used to be kind of like common practice like hey you know get this get this product as a discount in exchange for a re review right like that's kind of right. where it stemmed from and then those review groups also turned into search find buy groups mm. and hey, click this special link type of thing um and that stuff just needs to go away honestly it's like i love loopholes i love breaking rules <laughs> i love all those things but like um we're it's cheating right like just have a good product know who you're selling to and, and that's just an easier way to build a business and it's a fair way to build. Sometimes certain rules suck and they deserve oh, yeah. to be broken. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the, the, right? The, the, yeah. But Nothing like, is fair, right? Nothing here is fair. Right. But this one, like you're just, you're, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of being a crappy, crappy person. Crappy you know, I heard model. something <laughs> if I want to give big props to somebody here for a second. Leslie Pearson, she's a member of MDS. She said something to me that still in the back of my mind. Like, I want to sleep better at night. You yeah. know, if you're doing some of the stuff that's right, just like on the edge or like edge, you may be a little bit like, when is that going to, when is the party going to end? Or when are you going to get caught? And that's kind of in the back of your mind. You're like, I don't want to do anything that takes for my sleep at night. Yeah. And I think that's a healthy way to look at it because if you want to be able to sleep at night, you want to be in this for the long run maybe some of those things like a search find buy may not be the best use of your time. Right. 100%. I thought of something else that, that came if we want to add a bonus. Oh. 
People love bonuses. Bonus. Prop 65. Um, Prop 65. Do not sleep on this because there are lawyers actively going after both resellers as well as private label companies. It turns out that... So Prop 65 has to do with chemicals in products. And those chemicals in the state of California, they want you to declare that, you know, on Amazon, that it, it does have lead or whatever the chemical is, you know? And the warning shows up. Now, um, there are some very aggressive lawyers going after folks on Amazon. And it used to be that... Amazon would have to take on that responsibility themselves as a legal team to defend those suits. That's not happening anymore. And they're passing the buck on to the sellers on the listing. Even if you're not the seller that created the listing. So something to not sleep on in 2024 is Prop 65. So if your product has some kind of chemical or substance that would be uh within that category that needs to declare it make sure you pay attention to that declare it it's on there you'll sleep better at night knowing that these aggressive lawyers are not coming after yeah 100 percent, man and i think there's a lesson in there that can fix a lot of these types of problems for people is if you see something coming from like the federal trade commission or the um uh, food and Drug Administration or uh, a, a state like California, which, you know, does a lot of things that other states don't do and they have a lot of money and power behind them. That yeah. stuff trickles down and affects Amazon because they don't want to get in trouble by those things. Yes. So a, an easy lesson that allows everyone to be on top of these things in the future is like just pay attention to what's going on with things bigger than Amazon yes. and how that will impact uh, a category, a seller, a product on Amazon. And you'll be able to figure these things out more quickly. You know what? Let me share a tip because I like what you just said because I've started doing that the last month myself, Nick. Uh, we're in the electronics category. That's where we hang our hat on. Um, and there are companies that are way larger, big, huge, humongous multinationals. I've just gotten the habit of doing two things. Going and listening to the investor calls for companies that are, let's say, like HP, right? They're in the electronic space and they're computers. We don't necessarily sell computers, but we have devices that touch them. Mm -hmm. And when they report to, the, to Wall Street and their investors... They're going to say, you know what? We see PC sales going down for the next six quarters. I'm just throwing it. next next six quarters. Sales are just going to tank. What that does for us, which we're inside the electronics, it has an effect because if their team of researchers, salespeople, and all that comes with their management team is telling them the next six quarters are going to be dark we probably will see something similar in ours. Yeah. Right? Because they have a whole team. And then I'll go and listen to, uh, let's see, HP is one, one and uh, Dell, for example. Dell, and Dell says the same thing. We got, we got dark clouds coming real soon or about to descend upon us. And I could use their teams, their experts, their investors, their teams that are, you know, forecasting and seeing, because, you know, they have supply chains and all this other stuff that they got to take care of. Now I have a little bit better of a crystal ball on what can affect my own little piece of that part of the pie because they've done a lot of research. Thank you very much. I'm yes. Gonna use it. And I'm going to use it for planning. Like, hmm, yes. we're going to have to reduce stock. Hmm, That's we're going to have to tip. buy more because they're saying the next two quarters have been or, or they're seeing some activity in the enterprise space or the mid market or the e-tail side. And ding, 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 bells start going off like, okay, let me use this to my advantage and put it into play. That's you so also powerful, get a, man. You could also get a, a report from ChatGPT if you don't go on the call, take the link, pop it into ChatGPT, give me a summary. Yeah. And it gives you a summary of that whole investor call if you don't want to listen to it yourself. I, lo I love that tip because it's something you couldn't 
a hundred years ago, that didn't matter, right? It wasn't a possibility. We Ooh. didn't have the technology to leverage something like that. And I think it's going to take quite some time for like public education and like regular life to catch up to the power of leveraging other things like that because like success leaves clues right like if you're looking in the right places listening to the right things just like you said you can have that magic crystal ball like a little more dialed in and it didn't all you had to do was read an article I, that's it that's it yeah. or again or, or take the link literally paste copy and paste into chat gpt summarize yeah. this and how does it impact what i'm doing and i put in what i do and it spits out it's uh hp is projecting two more quarters of negative growth or hp is projecting two more growth two more quarters of positive growth fueled by the enterprise space fueled by the consumer fueled by you name it and now i have a better and, and listening to amazon investor call same thing i pop it in there chat gpt tell me how this impacts the the uh yep. third uh, the the marketplace for third party sellers and whatever they've talked about in there if i didn't go listen to the call i've got all of the Amazing. things they're saying like yeah we're going to we're investing in uh what are we investing we're investing in seller support i haven't heard that yet but yeah. it'd be <laughs> nice to know that that's what they're doing you're like yes yes or we're laying people off. Holy crap! Things are gonna get really bad the next couple of quarters because they're they're gonna lay people and support off too, right? Yep. Every nobody's yep. immune from that uh, on the Amazon side. They laid off even more people more recently. Uh, that's a good right. tip, man. I'm I'm glad you dropped that one. And um, you know, all, all right, you mil million dollar listeners, you got seven things to do not do in 2024. You got some insights on the loopholes that have closed or are closing. But you also got a lot of good actionable tips that you could take away uh, for your business. So let us know if any of that stuff's working out for you guys. Uh, Ro, always enjoy doing the show with it you. It is. Man. Thanks for coming Another on. Another one. That's Another right. one. <laughs> I love All right, it. man. So thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for listening today. We'll see you, I guess, next time. Right next time. All righty. Thanks, Nick.